This is section 11.1 .1, and we're going to start to deal with the forerunner of calculus. And the first idea that we come across is the idea of a limit. And this limit notation right here is one that you will become very familiar with. And it's read the limit as x approaches a of f of x and then you would have an equals. So let's talk about what a limit means and, and how we could look at that and kind of discover it. So this says find the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x where g of x is equal to this function. Well, what we'll learn is that sometimes you can direct substitute in a, in a limit. If we let x be 2, what happens here on the bottom? It would go to zero. So, you know, that's a problem, but let's see what we can figure out. As we approach from the left, so we start out and we pick some values and get closer and closer and closer to two. And from the right, we do the same thing. And we see what the y value is as we get closer and closer. Well, we can tell, what is this approaching? It's approaching four but from the left and the right, but at x equals 2, it is undefined. So to determine if it exists, we, we figure that that's what's it approaching, even though it's not defined there. Okay, so we're talking about the values of g of x when x is close to, but not equal to 2. All right. Let's look at this picture and get some ideas of some different limits. So on this one, the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 6. So if we go, this, this graph is going this way. This part is going this way. So at negative 6, this does not exist. It's going different directions. That's something to think about. Um, the limit as f of f of x as x approaches negative 4. Well, coming in from the left, we hit here. From the right, we hit here. It says that does not exist. The limit of f of x as x approaches 0. So from the left, you end up here. From the right, you end up here equals 3.4, even though f of 0 f of 0 is defined here. So a couple of things that we've learned already. If the limit from the right and the limit from the left are not the same, it would appear that the limit does not exist. That's what's happening here. It has to be the same on either side. Now here, coming from left and right, it was the same, and it ended right here, and that y value was 3.4. Um, now we also saw that f of 0, right here, you can see this is defined here. It's an open circle here. The limit can exist even if the function is not defined there. Okay, that's important. Now on this one, the limit of f of x as x approaches 3. Well, from the left, we're going all the way down. From the right, we're going all the way down. So it's negative infinity. It says, so the limit does not exist. But typically, we go ahead and write the limit is negative infinity. Here, the limit of f of x as x approaches 4. Well, we're coming into 4. We hit here. We hit here. The y value is 1. It's not defined there, but that can be the limit. The limit as x approaches 6, okay, from the left or the right, we end up at a y value of 2. Your, your limit will be either a y value or positive infinity, negative infinity, or does not exist. And then if we're approaching infinity, um, the lim there's two rules, and it's for negative and positive infinity. The limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x to any power is equal to 0. So we use that rule 
to figure out things like this. The limit as x approaches infinity of 8x plus 6 over 3x minus 1. The technique is to divide each term by the largest power of x in the denominator. Well, that is just x. We don't have an x squared or x cubed. So I take 8x divided by x plus 6 over x divided by 3x over x minus 1 over x. Those x's cast, cancel out, and I'm left with 8. Anytime you have the 6 over x, this rule comes into play, and that's equal to 0. That's equal to 3. That's equal to 0, so our ultimate answer is 8 thirds. If we were to put this in the calculator and look as x approached infinity, it should be approaching about 2 and 2 thirds. Let's see if we can do that just to see that. I'll have to open up the calculator. So we're going to go here to y equals, and we're going to put 8x whoops, plus 6 divided by 3x minus 1. Okay, so as we can see, if I, let me get some room here. There we go. Um, so here as, this, as x is going to infinity, so as, if we were going this way, what is this number approaching? So let's look at a couple of things on our, on our table second table and let's pick sorry my goodness going crazy here so let's pick um, 20 and we get 2.8 and 30 2.7, 100, we get 2.6, 500, 2.67, 1,000. Okay, so what's happening as you go further and further, if I put 5,000, I am approaching 2 and 2 thirds, which is 8 thirds. So numerically, we can see that. Graphically, we can see it. So that's the idea of a limit. All right. So I think that'll get us going to see how we work on the problems. All right. So number one, we are looking at a graph similar to what we did on the notes. And we're saying, okay, does it exist? If it does, what's its limit? The limit as x approaches negative 4. So from negative 4, either way, we end up here. What's the y value there? It's 0. How about as we approach negative 2? Go up here. What's the y value there? 4. Okay, so those are pretty straightforward. The limit as x, f of x approaches 1, as x approaches 1. So here's 1. As this graph goes to 1, what's the y value there? Negative 1. x approaches 3. Well, here's 3. And from the left, we come into here. From the right, we come in here. Those are not the same, so the limit does not exist. has to be the same from left and right. All right, the limit as x approaches 3. Now, here we have a new term x approaches 3 with a minus there. That means from the left, and if you had x approaches 3 with a plus, that means from the right. Okay? All right, so 3 from the left, whoops, sorry, 3 from the left. As we're coming in from the left, what's the y value there? 2. 
if you're coming in from the right, what's the y value there? Negative 1. And then it says the limit of x as x approaches 3, not from left or right, but just in general. Well, it was different on left and right, so it does not exist. Then it says, what is f of 3? Well, here's 3. Is that defined in either of those circles? No, they're open circles. The answer is undefined. Okay, we're still working on that. The limit as x approaches 1 from the left. 1 from the left. That is 3. And 1 from, I think that's supposed to be a plus. One from the right is also 3, because we're here. And then in general it is 3, and then it says what's f of 1. I'm sorry that we have to go scrolling back, but f of 1 is also 3. All right, let's go to number 4. The limit as x approaches infinity. So here's our graph, and, and sometimes you have to just follow the graph. Where is it going? Where is it going? That y value is 3, so it looks like it's approaching 3. Use the table to estimate the limit as x approaches 2. So as we come in this way, we come in this way, we're coming towards 2. What are we approaching? 4.999, 5.0001. We're approaching 5. All right. Um, all right, something was happening there. I was losing things, and I think I'm, I think I'm back. Um, all right, so we've got this one. It says construct a table and find the indicated limit. If we plugged in negative 6, we get 0 here. So we probably need to use the calculator to do this. So I put that in Y1, and I went to my table, and I'm going to approach negative 6 from the left and the right. So I did negative 5.9, negative 5.99, etc., and then 6.01, 6.001. And what, am, what does it look like I'm getting to? I'm approaching 108. So that would be my answer. So put it in the calculator, come at it from the left and from the right, and see what y value you seem to be approaching. Number seven, the limit of x, f of x equals, uh, as x approaches seven, is 19. And as it approaches seven, g of x, it's 6. Use the limit rules to find the following limit. So we can subtract the limit as x approaches 7 of f of x minus g of x is simply 19 minus 6. That is a rule. We can just subtract and get the 13. This gives us f of x and g of x. So we have that limit is 3, this limit is 7. If we add them on top, and then on the bottom, we do 2 of g of x. We get uh, 2 times 7. So we have 10 over 14, which is 5 over 7. All right, on this one, we can't plug in 4. But what you always want to wonder about, and if you see something that looks like it would factor, try to factor it. And we did that, and those two mark out. Then we're taking the limit as x approaches 4 of only x plus 2, and we get 6. Okay. Number 10, remember this is approaching infinity. So here's our rule. Divide every term by the highest power of the denominator. And so we have 8x over x, 2x over x, minus 8 over x. Those canceled out, we're left with 8. Those cancel out, we're left with 2 minus 0 on, over here. So 8 over 2 is 4. Okay. Same thing here. The highest power on the bottom is x squared. So we divided every term by x squared. 
we get those canceling out, those canceling out. Um, those don't cancel out, sorry. But we can divide that one into that one, and we have 2 over x. Okay. Um, down here, those are gone. Same thing here, we do that and that. And we are left with 2 over x, and we have 1 over x squared. So that becomes 2 minus 0 over 5 minus 0 plus 0. So in other words, we're left with 2 fifths. Number 12, same kind of problem. We are dividing by x to the fourth on each of those. We're left with 6 over x plus 7 over x cubed minus 4 over x to the fourth. Every one of those goes to 0. On the bottom, those totally cancel. We're left with 5, and then we have 8 over x and 7 over x to the fourth. Those go to 0. We have 0 over 5, which is 0. Number 13. This is a graph of uh, e to the x. The limit as x approaches negative infinity. So we're going along here. What does it appear that we are approaching? A y value of 0. Where does the function have a horizontal asymptote? Well, if that's a boundary that it's approaching but never reaching, that's going to be the horizontal asymptote. So that would be 0. This is ln of x. As x approaches 0 from the right, where is the function going? Negative infinity. Negative infinity. Where does it have a vertical asymptote? That is the boundary. It's going this way. The vertical boundary is x equals 0. I think that is the last problem on there. So that should get you going on 11.1. .1.